All right, so I, I, in all truthfulness and honesty, I was filming a bunch of lessons, and um, I just thought I would film one off the cuff on a subject that I was not planning on filming one on, um, because I always like to be truthfully honest with you guys. I always like to really present what the real process looks like, and not some kind of uh, some kind of polished YouTube or Instagram or or the what the internet sees as the real process. So here's the real process of how, whenever I come up with things, how I come up with them. I'm very much influenced by a lot of the classic uh, jazzers. Elvis Jones, Tony Williams, Roy Haynes, Max Roach, Art Blake, all of those guys. They're phrasing how they do those things. Whenever you have guys getting together um, that are playing on a professional level or that have been schooled for a long time, they do not talk in listen to this lick that I learned type of terms. They don't talk in watch this hot fill that I... It's not really that. They break it down into chunks. They break it down into words, and they can use those words to build larger phrases. Now, they may use different terminology, but that is exactly what we're doing. I was just hanging out with um, Juan Carlito Mendoza uh, not too long ago, uh, a fantastic talent, middle school band director. I wish my band director played like him. And we were going through that, and that's what, we, that's what he was going. I've been working on this sticking, but, you know, and it turns around, you can make a melody with it like this, and then I'm working the kick drum through a grid, and then I'm doing this. So I want to do exactly that in this lesson. Who knows how it'll come out? I don't know. I haven't really planned this thing. I just thought I'd talk on this topic and um, and adjust my floor tom as we're going and um, and show you my process for how I would work out a phrase uh, or a word that I'm working on. So let's take a very simple one. Um, I did I did at least <laughs> have the forethought to to have one in mind. So it's it's going to be a simple one. Left, right, left. You're like, Stephen, that's really easy. Yes, it is. It's very easy, so you can do it. Now, let's use that as a building block, okay? So we have this. I would practice it over. Okay, easy enough. I got it. Then I would go, okay, well, what could I do next that would maybe add something to it? Maybe I put a kick drum before that, and that would be kind of fun. If we were in sextuplets, okay, so right there we've got something that we could use, okay? Now, I would go, okay, well, what, what else could I do to that? Well, let's add a flam on that. And so with the left, the first left, we're going to add a left-handed flam. Now, those of you that know your rudiment, that is a flam accent. So we're adding a flam accent, and we have a kick at the front of it. It's just a phrase. I don't have subdivisions or a time signature or anything right now. It's just a phrase. And then I could, I could maybe move. What happens if we move the right hand? I would start experimenting with that. So it's just kind of a fun phrase at this point. Later we can worry about 16th notes, sextuplets, 32nd notes, whatever that may be. Um, what happens if I move the left hand too? Let's move the left hand to the high tom. That's kind of cool. Okay, so I have a phrase that I'm working on. And then I would start to go, okay, cool. So for all of you that know, we have flams. And for all of those, for flams, you can play them open or close. And if you open them enough, they become almost uh, uh, two separate notes. They don't almost become, they become two separate notes. Right, just slightly opening them and slightly closing them. What happens if we open that? What, what happens there? So we got it closed. So 
so it's a it's a small variation, but I, I kind of like it. We're closed. Right, that'd be kind of hard coming over here. Close it up more. And some of you are like, that's a different thing, Steve. Well, it is and it's not. It's still the same phrase. We're still using the same basic terminology. We're just tweaking some things. We're making some things different. Okay, and so um, that would definitely be something that I could use if I was in a soloing uh, type of, a, of an environment. Okay, almost becomes uh, four stroke rough in the hands, right? Uh, so we, we have that, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Um, now, what else could we change about this? I'm literally just kind of kind of winging this. <laughs> um, the next thing I would do is I would adjust the kick. So what could I do with that kick? And the, and the most logical thing for me would be, what if we doubled the kick in the same amount of time? So instead of... So we have it closed with a flam. Or open it up. And I would start to kind of mix those and, and go in and out of them. Now that's a lot of fun. And then and then I would start to go, okay, well now that I have this. What happens if I play it with a subdivision? What happens if we play it with 16th notes? some space in there. Okay, so just kind of start to have some fun with it. Um, and then the next thing I would do is uh, obviously maybe take it to some different subdivisions. So, and I haven't tried this, but uh, what if we were in sex tuplets? It's harder than I think. So now I have a phrase, and it's not up to me to decide how you use that phrase. It's up to you to decide how you use that phrase. It's up to you to come up with a drum fill with it. It's up to you to learn how to solo with it. It's up. I would need to sit in here and work it out and be like, oh, what else could I do with this, right? So it's up to you to decide how you use that word and what other words you put with it to make a phrase. And there's a lot of things we could put with that to make very simple phrases, including space. A lot of you don't use enough space in your playing. So you could use some space in there. And space is a beautiful word to put in there. Sometimes the best thing to say is nothing at all. That goes for life too. A lot of times for me, like just keep your mouth shut. Um, it, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing, space is. So begin to think in the drums in a melodic terms. Begin to think of them in... Um, 
more phrasing than you are, how many notes can I fit in? Uh, begin to think in pocket and groove, and how can I stay within the groove but still play something that's fun like this? This is this almost re is reminiscent to me of like a Steve Gaddish lick or or uh, something like Warren Haynes may do. Um, uh, reminds me of that for some reason. Um, so, what are your thoughts? How do you go about the creative process? Have you ever thought in terms like this instead of learning just a drum fill? Have you ever thought, hey, let me just learn a phrase and then see what all the different things I can do with that? Let me know in the comments below. As well, we'll include some sheet music with this that kind of breaks out some of the basic things I was breaking out. That'll be in a pinned comment below this or in the video description. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, usually the lessons are a lot more organized than this, but this one, hey, it's real life. I want to just always be real with you guys. So as well, if you are uh, subscribed, hit that notifications bell so that you're updated whenever new videos um, are uploaded here and if you ever need help with your drumming if you ever need an organized program a system to help you go through your practice time jump over to the website uh, and go through the drum better daily program it's a membership program and uh, it's for everyone from beginner if you're just starting out to the very advanced players I'd love to have you be a part of the community it's a, it's a lot of awesome people in there but whatever you do I'll see you here in the next video